I will present the creation and evolution of the community of practice. It was created in 2017 during the first convention of the CGI platform for big data in agriculture in Colombia. You have here two twists, that testimony about the very active discussion to set up the focus of the community of practice. It builds on existing initiatives like uh, crop ontology, agronomy, IGAD, planteum, CGI ontology, working group. The members expressed in a survey their expectations about learning more about ontology, share their challenges they encounter in the use of ontologies, find the proper expertise or guidance, and contribute to concrete products. The COP in these four years has addressed those expectations. Then the membership of the community of practice is the following. We have a core group, which is the CGI Ontology Working Group, composed nowadays by 90 members. This is where uh, we discuss the working group's progress, the topics for uh, meetings we meet every month. Then 239 people subscribe to the LinkedIn group, where we post news about the webinars, the job, job positions, anything you want to know about uh, the progress of the community of practice. We also have 313 members or subscribers to the LinkedIn group where we post our webinars, 479 subscribers to the newsletter. Then we have those uh, groups, working groups that was created uh, for the COP and will be presented in details later on. But I want to thank the, my colleagues who have taken the role of conveners or chair or leaders to those uh, products. Then we created a task group this year to reinforce CGI and FAO collaboration for the interoperability of data in agri-food information systems. We have produced with the task group and the creation team a report with recommendation, a fact sheet which summarized the results. And then uh, the Agrovoc team has created a sub concept schema for one CGIR that gather all the terms we have submitted up to now. Then the key achievements of the community of practice are, are uh, all written in a paper we publish in the Pattern Journal dedicated to machine learning. So if you want to know more about the objectives and results and collaboration, please read that paper. I just want to add that uh, in her book, Successful Community of Practice, Emily Weber is proposing this schema about the phases that um, a COP uh, goes through. And I must say that over the four years, we went from forming the COP to maturing the COP, the early stages of maturity. And she indicated that as a COP matured, it starts to take ownership of its own processes and practices, and it makes an organization more resilient to change, which is very important nowadays. Then I wish to thank uh, Céline and Marie-Angélique, you all know them. So Céline Aubert has been a very active communication coordinator, organizing, preparing, facilitating webinars, making sure the web pages are up to date, uh, publishing blog posts. So thank you very much, Céline. And Marie-Angélique for her expertise in ontology that she has always shared. Uh, with the working groups, and she has trained colleagues inside and outside CGIR. So thank you, Marie-Angélique, for your contribution. And I need to thank all the members because we have created online resources uh, that are very useful for people who want to know more. We have concrete products, and the external audit of the Big Data Platform has concluded that this COP is a successful community of practice. So thank you to all, and now we can celebrate all together. Thank you, Elizabeth. Hello, all. I'm Céline Aubert. I'm coordinating the communication and webinar organization for the COP. Today, I will share with you what has been done by the COP in terms of knowledge sharing and communication, mainly via webinar and communication channels. To communicate with the members, uh, the COP is using four different channels, a web page, a newsletter, a LinkedIn group, and a YouTube channel. Only the web page and newsletter were used at the beginning, and the LinkedIn group and YouTube channels came later to answer a member's need. I will uh, now deep dive into each of these channels. So the web page is hosted on the website of the Big Data Platform. 
It gathers all the information about the COP, its goal, contact, description of the working group, links to ontologies developed by the COP, news and blog posts. This is a one-stop place to go to have all the information about the COP. It's also a, a space for members to share news about their work via blog posts. So 14 blog posts have been uh, written by members and the page has received 3,500 unique views since 2017. The page is also where you can subscribe to the newsletter. So, newsletter, regular invites to webinars and events are sent via the newsletter. This is an easy way for members to stay connected with the COP and its activity without being too engaged. So, it allows to reach a large public and spread uh, largely what the COP is doing. Subscription to the newsletter have grown through the year from 94 people in 2017 to 479 people today. For people that are deeply interested in ontology, there is a LinkedIn group. This is a forum for members to meet, exchange, share news and events. The group has been created in 2019, sorry, following requests from members to know each other and to be able to get in touch to share information. The group has known a stable increase in membership since then, and before the creation of the group, there was only a one-way communication through the newsletter and website. With the LinkedIn group, members can see who else is part of the group and directly connect uh, with them. And members are using this place to post job alerts, upcoming events, or even to volunteer for webinars. And finally, there is a YouTube channel where all the COP webinars are posted. It's a member to watch webinars they, they were not able to attend. Or, they can also find here webinars to understand uh, what is an ontology, how to select one, etc. Channel is getting new subscribers every year, reaching 311 subscribers now and up to 11,000 views today, allowing to spread the COP work and knowledge largely. The favorite webinar is Machine Learning and Ontology and have reached more than 5,500 views so far. So, regarding the webinars, 17 have been organized over the last three years. Four main topics have been covered. Introduction to ontology, all about our product and their uses, a deep dive into semantic technologies and how agricultural industry uses ontologies. Topics have been suggested by the members during the annual meeting or on LinkedIn, or members also suggested um, to be as speakers on yeah, LinkedIn. So, Webinars in number. We had 17 webinars, two training on ontologies, 41 speakers participated on our webinar. Among them, there were 37% of female speakers, 821 live attendees. The larger audience was 72 attendees, and in average, there are 46 attendees. So, this is in a nutshell what the COP has done in terms of knowledge sharing over the last four years. Now I will hand it over to Pankaj Jaiswal. Thank you. Hi, this is Pankaj Jaiswal from Oregon State University, and I will be talking to you about the trait ontology and plant ontology, a common reference resource for plant biology. As you can imagine, uh, there's a lot of data sets that are available for the plant genomics and genetics community that they have generated, uh, and that includes anywhere from maps and genomes, locus, QTLs, genes, markers, and you name it, and they are all there. Many of these features and objects are associated with characteristics that we call a record in the form of ontology descriptors. Uh, that includes anatomy and uh, uh, growth stages, the various subcellular and cellular level and molecular level uh, events as well as the phenotypes and traits and all these that are looking at. But many of these characteristics are recorded in response to various agronomic and management practices or environment and growth conditions and treatments that we are looking at it. So, uh, Plantium offers uh, various kinds of reference ontologies. Uh, you can imagine the ones in yellow are the ones developed by us, and crop ontology is a collaborative effort that is uh, managed and maintained uh, through this project as well. Uh, the many 
ontologies from that are developed as a community ontologies by crop ontology project uh, are integrated now into the plantium project and we do provide uh, the common cyber infrastructure in order to maintain uh, these uh, ontologies we provide uh, the standards the data formats the exchange protocols the mapping protocols and development and edit editing rights and uh, requesting the features. So all of these features are for any of these 24 uh, crop ontology terminologies are now being maintained through the GitHub repository that's maintained and managed by the Plantium project that we are looking at it. That's uh, we also developed as part of this process, uh, a developed, uh, co-developed rather, uh, the, the standardization for the trade dictionaries uh, that are extensively used by the plant breeding community uh, throughout the world. And uh, many of these uh, data sets, uh, once the, it's done by the breeders and geneticists, it moves into the ontological format and then it's converted there uh, automatically. And that, all of that ma management of the crop ontologies, the mapping of the trade dictionaries, the maintenance of the trade dictionaries uh, are all managed within the GitHub repository need to maintain its current uh, versions and distribute, distributed all the versions available for distribution to the community as well. So you can imagine uh, the community maintains the dictionary uh, for each crop that they are interested in. They are mapped over with the reference trait ontology, and I'll tell you a little bit while a little bit later about uh, how those mappings work. And then uh, these PO and TO work as a reference ontology to decipher the equivalences in the trait ontologies. These trait ontology, these mapped trait ontologies or crop ontologies are then converted into a different format that is integrated in the crop ontologies. But then it's further goes into an OWL uh, format conversion that is integrated into the Plantium and is available to the community as well. In the OWL format, we also have the reference state ontology and integrated version of the CO uh, in it. Along with these ontologies, the reference ontologies, we also provide annotations to close to about 20 million uh, individual annotations for about 96 uh, crops and species uh, that includes annotations with germplasms, mutations, QTLs, phenotypes, genes, you name it and we all have it. So this is how the mapping works. Uh, majority of the vocabularies are independent of each other. They do have equivalences between them, but uh, it's all in the curator's head. So we have developed some scripts to do those kinds of uh, mappings uh, with reference to the trade ontology. And uh, so for example, lentil term maps to a trade ontology term, so as maps to the corn or the rice, then we can make sure that through this mechanism, lentil, rice, and corn terminologies terms are equivalent to each other. And then that uh, allows us to integrate these ontologies into a bigger graph. And it also helps in enriching the tra reference trait ontology if there are uh, original reference terminologies are missing or lacking in the trait ontologies. So the graph looks somewhat like this, which is uh, the blue ones are more species agnostic or species neutral, whereas the species specific ones are the ones which are in the towards the edges or ends that you're looking at it. Same uh, good example is sorghum, for example, uh, the 1000 and 100 gram weight uh, that is a member or, or a, these are the child of the generic term grain weight. And the description you can you can get it from the web, ontology browser. These ontologies are used for annotating various objects. As I told you, this is an example of a, a general sorghum germplasm uh, that have been evaluated. And uh, after that data is integrated, the entry is also connected to the original source of the data provider. The data is also provided through the APIs, not only through the bulk uh, download format, but also through the APIs and in the browsable format that we are looking at it. So overall, the partnership that we have built with this community is to provide common ontologies, data standards, uh, provide training uh, and community consensus building exercises. And we also provide common cyber infrastructure for ontology development and maintenance, which, is, which has brought together uh, everybody under the same umbrella to maintain a version, control, version of uh, e each of those ontologies. 
uh, provide tools for editing and uh, making feature requests or, or updating the ontologies. And the whole thing is used for maintenance and development of the databases and software that we are looking at it, including the data exchange via APIs and bulk access. So let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Marie-Angélique Laporte. I'm with the Alliance of Biodiversity and CIAT, and today I'm going to talk about the agronomy ontology and the progress we made this uh, last year. So the agronomy ontology is an ontology, is, uh, an ontology that provides semantics needed to describe agricultural trials. You can see on the right of the slide like the root terms of the ontology, which give you a bit of um, sense of what content is covered by the ontology and, and you can see that we are um, providing or defining terms uh, to describe agricultural processes so which are basically agronomic practices such as like irrigation, fertilization, planting. Uh, we have also uh, defined terms uh, that are um, related to agricultural implements, to fertilizers, uh, both um, organic and inorganic fertilizers. You'll find a li list of that uh, in agro. Um, we also have environmental materials, so which are like farms or plots or, you know, physical things like that. Then we provide a list of organisms um, uh, that we are uh, reusing from uh, the NCBI taxonomy. And then uh, for everything related to measurements, we or characteristics that can be measured, you find that under quality. And then finally, we have terms related to holes and units of measurements. So in terms of statistics, uh, the ontology uh, has uh, 300, 700 plus terms, and which of the, those terms, 82% are reused from existing ontologies. And here I put like a list of all the uh, ontology that we reuse because we didn't want to start from scratch and we build on what was existing. So, I mean, the glue of all of these ontologies and, and agro is like the BFO, the basic formal ontology, with, which is like a top level ontology that is recommended by the Obo Foundry ontology. And then you can uh, see like all the other ontologies that are using uh, in, in, in agro and agro really focusing only on defining terms that are specific to the agricultural domain. In terms of our community, so several projects uh, contributed terms to agro um, and, and extended agro with the, speci the specificity, specificity of their domain. So, for instance, Rotamsted Research uh, contributed terms related to intercropping, and the ERA project contributed terms related to more to the agroecology uh, ecology domain. Uh, agro, the agronomy ontology also contributed terms to existing uh, ontology projects. So, I listed here were the terms that we are contributing. So, we are not just reusing ontologies, we are also enriching ontologies, existing ontologies with um, terms uh, that are relevant to agriculture but are not only depending on or, or are not specific to the agricultural domain. We also, in order also to facilitate the communication with our community and to uh, give them um, a, a way to easily provide feedback on our content, we decided to use like the GitHub issue tracker and to build on top of that like forms that will guide users to provide key information that is needed to create uh, or to amend, amend like the, the ontology. And so here I provided an example of the form that is the one when someone requests a new term and you can easily see that which terms are or which fields are mandatory and which one are not. Um, and, and so that guides the user but that also facilitate our task as agronomy uh, ontology curators as all the information that is needed to create new term or to um, update a term is already uh, provided through that form. We have several forms for several um, uh, things providing different types of feedback I mean so adding new synonyms, um, updating a, a, a definition, providing a reference, things like that. Finally, in terms of perspectives, we will be continuing to add more terms to the agronomy ontology to extend in uh, content. Uh, we will be adding particularly more terms uh, related to agroecology in the near uh, future. 
The agronomy ontology is also going to be used in the context of this 1CJR, particularly by the Excellence in Agronomy initiative and by the first scribe tool. Finally, we are planning on creating and maintaining mappings uh, between the agronomy ontology and existing standards that are widely used in the community, such as uh, the agrovoc or the ECASA variables, but also maybe data dictionary that are also um, produced by, uh, by projects. Uh, because it's important to ensure interoperability of the data. So that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. And now I hand it over to Suno that's going to present SEOND. Hi, my name is Sun Ho Kim. I am a senior data manager at International Food Policy Research Institute. Today, I'm very glad to introduce Social Economic Ontology, short name is SEONT. The SEONT is a joint effort from two communities of practice under Big Data Platform. The, the starting point of the building the ontology is to annotate 100 questions from the social economic data community of practice, which is a minimum set of um, questions for agriculture household survey. We didn't invent a wheel to build the ontology. We just reuse existing ontology, and if we cannot find the right term, we add the new one. And then we also using um, basic formal ontology, information consent ontology, and CJR agronomy ontologies. The Seonto working group has been working together to build ontology. Based on our scope, 100 question workshop was held in Rome, and that workshop we finalized 100 questions for agricultural household survey. After that, we structured the terms in social economic domain, and then we defined the methodology, how to build ontology, what kind of ontology we already use, and then we are uh, discussing how we build the ontology together. And then we released the first version of ontology. Based on our objectives, we annotated three household surveys. The first one is 100 questions, and second one is ERI data, and third one is NOMIS2 data, which is a famous data set in CJR. During the annotation process, we realized that it took a lot of time. That's why we adapt the machine learning algorithm with natural language processing tool so that that tool extracted concept from the questionnaire and option first and then human verified the output from the machine. It reduced a lot of time to annotate the questionnaire. The entire the work we have done was submitted to the uh, Frontier Journal. We are waiting for reviewers comment. The usage of the ontology. So as we mentioned, the, the narrow scope for building the ontology at the beginning, uh, we covered 100 questionnaires. And then these two surveys, which I show here, were, were the example how we use ontology into real world. The first one is MTSTIR survey from IRI, and then Romis 2 survey from the ILI and other centers. And the other example is Rumi's to online survey platform. It's not done yet, but this is kind of the future work. The Rumi's to group and the ontology working group together, we discuss how to annotate Rumi's to data in their new online survey platform. So the uh, Seont will be a uh, ontology to annotate their survey in their uh, Romis 2 data lake. Another opportunity is working in NASA agriculture supply chain project. So they are looking for the knowledge graph of agriculture supply chain. So we're going to be part of that uh, knowledge graph to support agriculture supply chain domain. One CDR initiatives will generate a lot of data next three years. I hope that SEONT can be an agile connector between agricultural 
household survey and other de heterogeneous data set such as geospatial data, satellite data, sensor data, weather data, and market price data. Beyond the CJR, the cell ontology can be a domain ontology to uh, feed the domain specific concept to other ontologies. Thanks so much for your attention. And then I will hand it over to Fish Ontology. Good day, everyone. I am Mr. Dario Superior from the Philippines. Today, I'll be presenting to you the uh, updates of the small scale fisheries and aquaculture ontology. Okay, so my primary task on this project is uh, to provide definitions on at least 300 aquaculture and small scale fisheries uh, terms. So, to find definitions, I've evaluated uh, print and electronic sources such as journal articles, which I found very useful since they uh, contain terms uh, on the language that uh, the scientists and researchers are using. Also, I've, uh, I am sourcing definitions on various online sources. Okay, so here are the print electronic sources that I have evaluated. For the online sources, uh, file term uh, portal, which uh, I evaluated were very, uh, is very useful and authoritative as it covered several aquaculture and uh, small scale fisheries terms. Likewise, online uh, thesaurus, primarily the agrivoc, uh, was found uh, to be very useful. Uh, at this point, I will be showing the uh, strategies that I employed when uh, finding or providing definitions. Okay, for example, for this uh, search term uh, catch grade, I would uh, first, I would check uh, the definition on the uh, various uh, sources. And as you can see in this particular search, uh, the uh, Google Scholar retrieved uh, 27 search results. This particular reference, which is on the management of uh, trawl fisheries in Vietnam. So I retrieved this particular uh, information source. Then I found that um, catch grade is used to categorize the catch according to quality and the size of the fish. I can already use the uh, definition based on the uh, description given in this particular uh, reference. However, yeah, I always uh, verify if uh, this definition is correct and uh, been used by serious researchers in other publications. So I opted to search in Google, as you can see here, in this particular result that contains catch grade and relates it to the size of the catch. Hence, I decided to uh, retrieve this uh, information source. Uh, it supports description rather given by the previous reference. So I defined catch grade as the categories of the catch according to the quality and the size of the fish, fish. And I also provided information that catch grade determines the, the value of the catch. Also, the best practice um, that I uh, emphasized is that to provide reference in each um, definition that uh, I provided. And uh, also the uh, digital object identifier or uh, the uh, URI for institutional repositories and the URL of the 300 or more uh, terms. Uh, I've already defined almost half. The issues that I've encountered is that some of the terms given in this ontology are very uh, specific based on the language of the uh, scientists and, and researchers, some of which are uh, very hard to define since they are very specific. 
uh, the team uh, decided to drop some of the definitions, like those about a particular species or uh, statistical uh, methodologies. Uh, we decided not to define. Okay, so that's all for uh, the uh, aquaculture and small scale fisheries ontology. Thank you very much for listening. I will present the latest progress of the crop ontology. Then the crop ontology uh, has a new website that was released around the end of October. Uh, the new website has been redeveloped by Carlos Quiros using the graph database Neo4j and the data-driven document for graphical visualization. Marie Angelique also has contributed to make sure the ontology website is um, has some feature than the old one. Um, and then uh, if you click on the icons here, you can have a graphical visualization with the icon on the left, like this, uh, that position the thread in, in the graph of the ontology. You can also um, download RDF format, the thread dictionary, and you can also upload an updated thread dictionary directly or delete the ontology, which is not very recommended. You have some warning messages. So the Crop Ontology new website also offers a site maintenance uh, feature like the revision of terms. So on the term details, you have an edit button that enables uh, the curator or somebody with the, the rights to submit some corrections or suggestions, and you have an interface to accept or reject that proposition. Also, curators are now enabled to modify their uh, ontology banner to update it or change it uh, with a content management system. So the, all those features are great progress. Uh, using the guidelines we published last year, the revised guidelines and the template, um, we got new crops, the quinoa by the Quinoa Phenotyping Consortium and coconut by the Coconut Genetic Resources Network. They are available online. So it's adding to the list of crops. So now we have 33 species, more than 5,000 traits, more than 7,000 variables, and all are CC by 4.0. Of course, the crop ontology cannot exist without the community of curators who are actively maintaining those ontologies were nominated by their centers. We also uh, uh, continue the integration of the crop-specific ontologies into the trait ontology of Planteum. This is the active work of Marie-Angélique Laporte and Laurel Cooper from Oregon State University. And this enables to uh, run a trade search on Planteum uh, across species. We, with the project called RTB Food, so root tubers and banana, we are now extracting from uh, the lexicon prepared for trade sensory panels the uh, type, attributes, uh, and property of a food product into um, trade dictionaries. The idea being that we bring to the breeders the preferred characteristic of a food product uh, as per the consumer's preferences. So this is a very interesting addition to the crop ontology. Also, we are integrating the crop ontology into the platform called ClimMob, which is an online platform for a project engaging agricultural citizen science, so farmers. It's a project developed by the Alliance, by Jacob Van Etten, and Carlos Quiros is the developer and the conceptor of this platform. So the idea being that we can uh, annotate the traits preferred by the farmers with the crop ontology. And through this uh, exercise, we facilitate the connection of ClimMob to the breeding database using BRAPI. Also, because the, the crop ontology is a collaborative product, uh, we need to improve the quality control process to bring trust into its content, and we need to develop the governance description. So we had a meeting in May with the main stakeholders, and the schema is um, the result of our discussion going from the curator of the ontology to the publication online using our guidelines, 
quality checking tools, making attribution. And all this will be soon described in a document we are preparing with uh, the help of Tom Hazelkamp. Thank you very much for listening to, to this presentation. Hello, good day to everyone. I am Jeffrey Detras. I am a bioinformatics specialist from the International Rice Research Institute. I will be sharing with you what has been done for the UAV Working Group. Precision agriculture and digital farming employs the use of UAV technologies. With this technology, high throughput phenotyping using unmanned aerial vehicles like drones is a reliable, faster and cheaper way to collect phenotype data from the field than manual data curation. Data gathering, processing, and analysis of UAV-generated data requires proper data management and curation. In order to be fair compatible, there is a need to define the standards. With the help of data standards and ontologies, UAV-generated data will be fair. The CGIAR ontology working group has been helpful in defining the standards for agricultural data. Last July, the group had a kickoff meeting together with representatives from the CGIAR centers and We Robotics, a private company collaborator. We have Elizabeth, Sunhu, and I as co-chairs together with the following members. The group is still new, and this is an opportunity to promote it as well and an invitation for colleagues who share the same interest to join us. Currently, there are already defined standards like the sensor, observation, sample, and actuator or SOSA ontology core and semantic sensor network ontology. These ontologies are defined by the World Wide Web Consortium and were created as modular ontologies that can be adapted for a specific usage, such as agricultural data. With this as a backbone, the working group hopes to adapt and develop a UAV ontology that will be useful for data sharing within one CGIAR and the community beyond. I will now hand it over to Ima and Christine. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on the session that you are attending today. Um, uh, thank you so much for having invited Christine and myself representing FAO in this meeting. We are going to introduce a collaboration between AgroVoc and uh, DCOP. For those that know no much about AgroVoc, just to mention very briefly, that is a multilingual and controlled vocabulary that covers the terminology under FAO's areas of interest. It's very popular and is increasing substantially uh, the number of um, hits and uh, users that we are receiving <clears throat> from our infrastructure. So just to mention that in 2021, we got 67 million accesses to Scosmos and Lodi and about a million accesses to our web services in Sparkle. But in both cases, the increased respect 2021 was quite substantial. Not to say the number of concepts and terms, Agrivo has an important and reliable network of organizations supporting the creation of the vocabulary. Now with CGIR, one CGIR on board as well. And we are creating about 41 uh, languages in total. So why we are here in a way is because in 2021, um, this COP in a way, and uh, together with data management as well, uh, they created a task force to define the collaboration between FAO and CGIR in the context of AgroVoc. The main reason was because the CGIR metadata core schema recommends the use of AgroVoc for the CGIR data and publications that are published in a very diversified um, number of repositories within uh, one CGIR. This, um, this um, task group had the, the objective to identify how to define a consistent process to submit the CGIR terms together with FAO and also to stimulate the submission of um, these missing terms that are important for these databases to improve the quality of terms, to encourage also to our colleagues in CGIR uh, to submit it and just to remind them that they can submit 
or propose um, uh, concepts and, and terms anytime. We are there, Christine is there to listen to all of you and uh, to work together to look for a reliable semantic tool that would be useful for a broad context, but definitely into the CGIR framework. And now I'll give uh, the flow to Christine, who is going to present excellent results that we got in 2021. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Emma. Yes, just to highlight that the CGR task group has been very active in proposing new concepts, ideally things that are, don't exist in Agrivoc already. So we already have an influx of the first ones. And the first ones that were published in November this year, and we have, you can see on the screen here, social inclusion is one of them child stunting, emerging diseases. The very, very newest one is blue carbon. So these are, you know, again, areas that we don't, we don't have covered in Agrivoc, but we're really happy to have the technical feedback and expertise from CGR colleagues to suggest this. And there is also a brand new one CGR subscheme created in Agrivoc. So uh, great work, everyone. Back to Emma. This is also going to help CGR to understand better what is the impact and also the amount of all the work that they are providing to Agrivoc and to make an evaluation at a certain point in time. Thank you, Christine. Just to finalize our presentation, just to mention a couple of quotations from uh, the chief scientist in FAO, Ismahin Elwafi and um, Andrew Jervis from Seattle um, uh, Biodiversity, and that's uh, both of them, executive director, of course, both of them, encouraged this collaboration and mentioned how um, how this is going to be or is going to be a high value uh, valuable um, effort to also um, to support the global scientific community uh, not only in our organizations but in a broad um, very broad sense thank you to everybody and uh, if you have any question we are here physically so you don't know this is a recording so um, or you can contact us anytime if, um, if you want to ask for more information about our work. Thank you so much. Thank you.